Hi everyone, it's FSKH Fashion Drawing Tutorials and in this lesson we are going to render the look um, presented by Istituto Marangoni London Spring Summer 2018 ready to wear and we will deal with uh, uh, like PVC or patent leather textures um, uh, which are very uh, reflective and this is a good example to work on for that and we will also create like uh, big volume garments so it's, it's going to be fun and as usually I start with the head and I'm showing just how I run the skin and draw the makeup and in this case the fashion pose is just regular one where the model is walking on the catwalk and here she she has her right side of the mm, hips uh, like lifted and her right side shoulder is um, going down so you you have exact the same pose um yeah you can see just on the drawing so now i'm drawing your earrings we have these squares and we never draw them as a like absolute square because they are probably turned a little bit so we draw them in perspective a bit uh, distorted so then we have this kind of sticks and that elliptic shape more like half of ellipse and uh, next we have uh, a turtleneck so I draw first the base of turtleneck, it's at the level of jugular point and then a bit higher I draw a bit narrower ellipse and then just connect them on the side. Okay, so uh, I'm drawing just a bit wider garment at the shoulders so you can see that it's not exactly at your shoulder it's a bit lower <clears throat> so here is our standard pose she's just walking I always draw the structure it's really important even if you like you draw a fur coat and everything is really thick it's important to draw a structure of the body inside so everything is at the right place especially like details like palms some uh, things like that because you can end up with an arm that looks bro like broken or something is wrong with that arm. So now, uh, you know, like I do this very often. I just draw my first impression, then realize that sleeve is actually of a different shape. And then I draw it again. So we have really big um, sleeves. You can take a look at the picture and usually when we create a fashion illustration when the, something has a huge vo volume like skirts or sleeves or uh, a hat we draw it a bit bigger we need to exaggerate things um, in order for illustration to really deliver the message about the volume if you draw just exactly as you see it it, it will be really a boring illustration so here uh, I drew this kind of uh, corset at your waistline and then you can see that we have these exaggerated hips. Uh, we have this kind of uh, curved angle, curved corners. And uh, because this is a really thick and firm fabric, uh, we have this like strong, big, folds and also when you have a huge folds uh, it's a great force which can make some deep 
folds around it. And again, there are no uh, one the same folds that you repeat and repeat again. You'll just notice that certain fabrics tend to have some shapes of folds that are similar or wrinkles. But it's always something new, always something unique. So just tr draw more, more types of different textures. So now I'm drawing this uh, stockings, and the stockings have have this piece of fabric attached in the front, the same shape as legs, with some ruffles around it. So. Again, I uploaded the image of this design to the Patreon page, so just you can take a look at it <clears throat> to understand better what I'm drawing. If you have uh, two screens, you can use them like computer and your phone or a tablet and uh, follow the tutorial, but at the same time have a reference image. So because just copying what I'm doing um, will make less impact without the original image because uh, seeing how it looks in reality and seeing what I'm doing will help you understand how to translate that texture and reality to fashion illustration. So um, I'm starting with uh, with a dusky pink. Dusky pink is a bit a kind of a peachy skin tone, but at the same time, it's not too orange or too yellow. Uh, you know, sometimes there are like colors like blush that I never use for skin tone or oatmeal. They just look strange. So now I'm using satin. Very often I use, uh, well, at least two, two markers. One is lighter one uh, for highlights and for the base. Like now I'm just coloring the rest, right? And one is for shadows that I begin with. So while everything is uh, still wet, I'm applying warm gray too. And I usually, especially with the face, I try to work really fast because uh, when you have, when the surface is still wet because of previous marker, uh, the new layer of marker is applied very softly. And that wet surface makes it, you know, like bland. So try to work a bit faster. So again, I'm using a dusky pink. And uh, it's also nice to make one side a bit darker. In my case, it's right side. And again, some warm gray. You can use warm gray three or four because we have a bit stronger shadows under your uh, jaws. And now I'm using warm gray two for your neck. purple pencil and um, well that's my like w almost final step before the highlights I add extra shadows on the eyelids I uh, show your nose bridge uh, add some shadows under her nose just to make it more dimensional so her nose is not flat it it works as a um, as a tent that prevents the light below it to come from the top. So that's why we make the bottom of the nose darker. And we have uh, some shadows just around the outline, especially the darker side. Uh, then we just add some shadows inside your ears, especially on the top. I don't draw the details of the ears, just... Um, I don't know, for me, on the fashion illustration, they look too much like. And the final step is adding highlights. 
and I usually add some sparkles like Lita on her cheekbones. I add some highlights in the center of the chin because it's prominent. I'm going to use um, mint color and holly, like two uh, like similar um, hues and but different values. So you can use um, any color. Just pick ones that are uh, of the same like temperature, same hue, but different values, like light and darker one. And again, I'm applying while mint is still wet, so everything blends well. And then I'm adding cool gray five for the shadows. Okay, using some dark gray uh, fine liner, just showing this. Uh, I'm not coloring everything, I'm just partially showing the shape because we have some highlights there too. If you take a look at some metal details, I'm using holly and uh, setting some silver pencil. If you take a look at some metal details of the bags or jewelry, you'll see that um, they have some dark light grays and sometimes you don't see the outline of the shape because it's shining that much. It just blends with, uh, with white background and we have white background. So how to color like uh, cotton clothing that is white? So I will show you, we will use Cool Gray 2, Ice Gray 1 and Blender. I start with the Blender uh, to wet the surface. So everything that I apply next just blends well, it doesn't look like separate gray shapes. Next I'm using Cool Gray 2 and now when I'm applying on a wet surface it's applied very very softly and it looks lighter than it would look if I apply it without blender. I use Cool Gray 2 for like really strong obvious shadows or deep folds. And I'm going to use Ice Gray 1 afterwards just to show shadows um, related to the like sh shape like of the body. For example the the part that is above breast is lighter and the part that is below breast is a bit darker. So that's what we're going to use Ice Gray 1 for. So for now I'm just drawing all the main shadows with Cool Gray 2. Okay, so now I'm using Ice Gray 1 and you can see like very subtle um, shadows. Like I'm just using it to, to kind of darken white. So, and I leave white only on the lightest part, like the top of your breasts. Here we have kind of a face profile. So I decided to draw it with a fine liner of similar color. It's a bit darker, so I'm going to add shadows with it too. a bit more of cool gray too. Here I'm adding cool gray too inside of the fold. So I don't need that much of blender to blend it with the white. Okay. Here I can use just ice gray one without blender because I want just to add stronger shadows it's our darker side so a bit of ice gray one and again cool gray two and uh, you can use some pencil like uh, black just to show some details for for example the shadows between her neck and turtleneck and we have it like quite a slim fitting turtleneck so it's impossible to show those shadows with a thick nib of the marker 
So I'm using pencil. Case, a bit of ice gray one so now it's just about you know you, if you feel like adding a bit more here and there just final details and again a bit of black pencil Okay, so now I'm drawing her fingers. She's uh, grabbing the edges of her sleeves. Here we have actually some space left between uh, your waist and the bodies. And I'm coloring the whole sleeve with a base mint color. And while it's still wet, I'm working with the holly. And I want it to blend well because while I work mint dries and markers dry really fast because uh, this is green marker because they are based on alcohol. So I'm adding a bit of gray. You can use cool gray four because um, it's not as dark as cool gray five. And I just want some parts to be really green and some parts to be a bit desaturated so I use gray and here I'm adding some cool gray 5 so the um, area inside the one that is closer to the body is going to be a bit darker and you can even use a bit of black and it's better to use it while everything is still a bit wet cool gray 5 between holly and black, so they blend together. And next, let's add a bit more of the holly. And next I'm working with um, white ink pen, and I use Sakura one, number 10. It's really like thick. And uh, in some parts I just smudge it, in parts where I want to have highlights but I don't want them to, you know, like, have, um, be super strong. It works well when you have, like, long highlights. It's uh, hard to smudge it in the shape of wave or something like that. In that case we would leave just the shape of highlights and work maybe with blender. So now I color like the shorts part again with mint. And again, holly. So 
we will just leave some top of the folds that are shiny and for that we drew the folds in the beginning so here we have it Here we have the seams. And the outline, we usually color it. So cool gray four, we make um, the right side a bit darker and now I'm using green so it's quite cold sort of green using blender applying holly and holly you can see it's applied a bit it looks lighter than when we applied it to the more or less dry surface and you can actually use the same dark color, for example, apply it once and then apply a blender and work on the borders and you will have some transition because it will be applied in a lighter way on the borders. Cool gray five inside of the dark parts on the right side outline, just making everything darker. So we need really strong contrast. We have super light parts with white highlights and we have super dark parts with even some black. And now I'm using some black. Just dividing these two sides and adding it inside of the like really dark parts. Cool gray four. And here we have some buttons, let's show them. And usually it's nice way of showing buttons is making these uh, curves on two sides with a fine line pen. And now I'm showing the highlights. Here we are going to have um, like a seam, like two stripes and I'm adding uh, like a thread line, double thread line. And along that thread line, I add a bit of highlights. You can work with uh, both white pen and pen, black pencil. You add uh, super strong highlights with the white pen and you show any dark details with a black pencil. So here we have one more um, like seam. And also when you work with a white pen, don't try to build the perfect lines. Make it live by, you know, just playing with the pressure on your pen. So sometimes your line can um, uh, can stop and you will have some gaps. Okay, some highlights.
And here we have one more seam showing it the same way as I did on the other side, but here we take into account that we have different folds on this side. So it's going to curve around those folds. And again, many, many dashes for the threads. And again, you can see that I'm not adding highlights just randomly. They're mostly, most of them are located in the lightest parts. I'm not adding them where I have super strong shadows. It's either the top of the fold or um, just some light area. Whenever I add them like in the dark parts, I just try to make some wrinkle there that is elevated above the dark spot. You can work with any color. You can make it magenta. Then you will use some maybe cerise or some light pink lilac and use some um, uh, purple or magenta. You just need to pick colors that work together. And then you will use uh, grays and blacks as well. Just will have a different color. You can make uh, um, some overall or just some long trousers. You can practice more by just designing something using this technique, but something different. It will give you much more in terms of uh, just practical application later. So again, mint, then I'm applying holly while my mint is drying more and more. And this side is darker, so I'm applying more of the holly. Okay, now I'm applying cool gray 5 and some black. More you draw, more confident you become with uh, just playing with the marker and adding different, different ones and just draw more. And also learn different things. It's strange, but if you, I'm sure if you start swimming or playing chess you'll be a bit better in drawing as well too maybe because we use the brain all the time so i'm adding highlights not that many okay so now we were left with the lower part of your body and I start with the shadows again. I'm using dusky pink. And uh, for it's important for the legs to have really um, the stretched shadows with the soft edges because our skin is soft. It's tight. So I added satin and while it's still wet, worked on the edges between dusky pink and satin. You can also start with the, with the satin, wet, wider area, and then apply dusky pink. You can do it if, for example, we want uh, the front leg to be a bit lighter, just because it's in the front. I'm adding some cool gray 4 on the back leg and some warm gray three that I usually add for the shadows, like here, just below your shorts. 
um, also showing the shape of the knee a bit of cool gray floor just to make some stronger shadows and whenever you have these mistakes you can fix them with white pen if they're not too huge a bit more of dusky pink all right so next we have your stockings that that blend a little bit with her shoes because they are of the same color uh, they actually no have no color they're just white so i start with a blender just as i worked with her shirt i'm using ice gray one i just want everything to be applied very softly and i'm making the right side a bit darker so i um some ice gray just tried to use the darker one and it's just too dark okay so on, uh, for the ruffles uh, everywhere i have where i have the wave going down the area between two pieces of ruffle i add shadows just to separate the ruffles okay so eyes gray one i'm adding shadows on her shoes already And uh, you can use some ice gray four or three if you want to add some stronger shadows as I did. But be very careful. Just try to apply them very naturally. No exact like shapes like triangles or some or just lines. Try to mix different grays. If you use some dark gray, use a bit lighter one next to it. So we have some transition. It, so this dark shadow uh, didn't appear out of nowhere. So there is a... That part was becoming darker and darker gradually. So... Also, you can apply first lighter gray and then add dark one on the top of it just a bit less and here we have um, sort of a rope that is um, attached with uh, threads or some some lines or maybe a ribbon or something so this rope is attached and we need to show that it's also wrinkled it's also following the shape of your legs and at the end of that rope we have um, some sort of a rings and uh, because she's moving those rings are moving around really like dynamic so here we have it lifted because of your movement here also because she's stepping and we are left with the backside leg Okay, so adding some shadows with a black pencil to show some of the like strong folds to show those ruffles a bit and also try not to outline everything. So on the top we needed to separate the ruffles from that back fabric so I used a little bit of black pencil. You can show those ruffles with the stronger shadows. Um, and uh, use the black for example to separate your shoes from the stockings eyes gray three ok 
Okay, a bit of gray. And now it's gray one again. And again, adding some shadows to show the ruffles. So, and with white ink pen, I'm showing those threads that are attaching those ropes to the stockings. Okay, so you can use some ice gray two or ice gray three. I want to just her to have some light hair, so I'm just using ice gray two and ice gray one. And then I'm showing some hair with a regular pencil. And then we are done. Like I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you learned something new for yourself and that you are going to use this technique in your illustrations. Thank you for being my patron and supporting my art and see you very soon.